Elon Musk, named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, just revealed the ambitious timeline of SpaceX's Starship for getting to Mars. Let's take a look in today's episode of Great SpaceX. By the way, if you're new, welcome to our channel. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to make sure you never miss any updates from us. Now, let's get back to today's content, shall we? When will SpaceX's Starship go to Mars? According to Elon Musk, it could be surprisingly soon. The company's underdevelopment rocket has yet to complete its first orbital flight, but in a Monday interview, the SpaceX CEO appeared positive that the ship will meet its most ambitious targets on time. These include a trip around the moon in 2023 and getting to Mars this decade. Musk made the comments in a Time interview published on Monday. The comments suggest that despite clashes with the Federal Aviation Administration and issues with the ship's Raptor engine, Musk remains confident that his ambitious ship will power SpaceX's biggest missions this decade. If he succeeds, SpaceX could help transform humanity into a multi-planetary species. He aims to use the early missions to kickstart a million-strong city on Mars as early as 2050. But of course, that's not the reason why we made this video for you today. Of course, we have to talk about the timeline for getting to the moon and Mars. Musk's latest timeline suggests an ambitious schedule. During the interview on Monday, Musk suggested SpaceX could head for the moon in around two years. He said, I think we can do a loop around the moon maybe as soon as 2023 and land on the moon's surface within three years. He also claimed that SpaceX could land on Mars by around 2026. I'll be surprised if we're not landing on Mars within five years. That suggests three upcoming deadlines for Musk. For 2023's moon mission, this is likely a reference to the Dear Moon trip outlined in 2018, which will send Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa and a group of passengers on a tour around the moon. The six-day voyage will take three days to get to the moon and three to come back. Then in 2024, moon's surface. In April, NASA announced it had chosen SpaceX to build the lunar lander for its upcoming Artemis mission. This will send the next man and first woman to the surface of the moon. SpaceX's ship will transport the astronauts between the Orion spacecraft and the surface. It's unclear whether the Artemis mission will actually meet this target, as NASA says that 2025 is a more realistic goal. Administrator Bill Nelson claimed in November that the project lost nearly seven months to litigation. By 2026, the Mars mission. In 2017, Musk outlined a plan to send the first cargo ships to Mars by 2022. At the time, Musk described his timeline as aspirational. Following the first cargo ships, Musk plans to send the first humans to Mars the next time the two planets come close enough. I am extremely impressed with this plan. It's completely in keeping with the ambitious nature of Musk himself. While we are always in support of Musk, we can't deny that this schedule is really not easy to carry out. And that also begs the question, will Musk meet his ambitious timeline for the moon and Mars? What's fascinating about Musk's new comments is that he's sticking to this ambitious timeline. This is despite two main setbacks. The former is related to the delays to the first orbital flight of Starship. SpaceX is preparing to launch a prototype of the Starship and its accompanying Super Heavy booster on a trip into orbit. In August, Musk claimed the ship should be ready to reach orbit in a few weeks, pending only regulatory approval. The FAA delayed these plans due to an environmental review. The review will determine whether the ship can fly. On October 22nd, after SpaceX completed a successful static fire test with its SN20 Starship prototype, Musk had said, if all goes well, Starship will be ready for its first orbital launch attempt next month. That was back in November. The billionaire, however, ended the tweet with pending regulatory approval. The highly anticipated orbital launch is in limbo as the FAA conducts an environmental assessment of the launch site. Space entrepreneur Rand Simberg also explained last month that it speaks to Musk's latest issue. He said, Musk's latest issue is not technical, it's regulatory. He's waiting for the FAA to give him permission to fly out of Boca Chica and do an orbital flight. Musk's SpaceX recently got the green light from the FCC for the orbital launch of Starship early next year, but it will still need to pass FAA environmental review before the rocket can leave the ground. So that was the first setback. The latter belongs to the Raptor production crisis. 
Earlier this month, it emerged that SpaceX is struggling to build enough of the Raptor engines that will power the Starship and Super Heavy. Together, the two vehicles require 39 engines, a huge number indeed. Musk has an ambitious target to build 800 to 1,000 Raptor engines per year to outfit a vast interplanetary fleet of Starships and the Earthbound Super Heavy boosters that will send them on their way to conquer deep space. But in an email to staff earlier this month, Musk called for all hands on deck to recover from what can be called a disaster. And of course, no Starship means no Starship revenue from governments and commercial clients. Earlier this month, Musk warned that a severe global recession would mean that bankruptcy, while still unlikely, is not impossible. Obviously, the Raptor production crisis has greatly affected the progress of Starship. To clarify, let's learn about Super Heavy Booster 5. On December 8th, while SpaceX is ramping up the installation of equipment at Starbase, setting the stage for SpaceX tests of the first orbital-class Starship and Super Heavy booster and preparing for the historic launch attempt of the largest rocket ever built, Booster 5 departed the high bay, then moved to its new home next to the retired SN15 and 16. Before that, it was identified as one of SpaceX's first two Super Heavy boosters making good progress towards test debuts. It is even conjectured that if SpaceX does not complete Super Heavy B-5 well ahead of B-4's schedule, it will soon find itself with two test-ready Starship boosters, but only one orbital-class stand with which to test them, potentially forcing the company to make some interesting decisions. But now perhaps the company will have less of a headache since Booster 5 is history even before flying. And that is, uh, such a shame really. The cause was due to the insufficient number of Raptors. Musk himself has also admitted that booster production is currently ahead of engine production. When the necessary number of engines is not available, the booster will be retired, making way for future prospects. But some still believed that SpaceX will not throw away the B-5, that it's being stored in order to make space for the construction of other prototypes. Personally, I feel this speculation is not very optimistic. but. Elon also said the Raptor production issue is getting fixed. In any case, I hope they're right. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX and my team and I will see you next time.